Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to my weekly update. It's fantastic to see here in South Wiltshire that summer seems like it has finally arrived and, and harvest now with a with sort of hopefully a window set of 10 days um, should be getting done and I, I just hope that this weather is being replicated across the country. It's been an extraordinarily challenging year weather-wise. Um, I wanted to flag up to you today that the NVZ appeals process for those farms coming in for the 21-24 period is about to start. Now we're requesting that DEFRA pause the letters going out to farmers for six to eight weeks because we're saying it is such a busy time for these letters to be landing now but please keep an eye on NFU online for further details of when that appeals process is, is going to be starting. And another really thorny issue that's been a, a very challenging area for my entire time as an office holder in the NFU is the reintroduction of beavers. And that consultation is about to start. Now for us, this is absolutely about having beavers in the right place. There are devastating consequences if this does not bear in mind throughout the process that farmers are fundamentally producing food. These are our businesses. And so having a, a robust impact assessment is going to be absolutely essential. We know, um, particularly from our farming colleagues in Scotland, the devastation that they are, can cause if they are reintroduced in the wrong place. So it's going to be really important to get a, a very good response to that consultation. Um, it just seems on every level, I, I think there is an unprecedented amount going on at the moment. And when I look to the Environment Bill, I look to the Animal Sentience Bill, and I have to say it leaves me enormously perplexed. You know, we took the decision, this government took the decision that we are leaving the EU, we are negotiating trade deals at, I have to say, one hell of a pace. Government does not seem to be uh, anywhere near to making sure that those other countries abide by the same rules that the farmers I represent have to abide by. And we seem quite happily to be raising standards. And of course, we've got history in this area, as I've said to you many times before, where we, we absolutely decimated our pig sector by introducing legislation that ultimately banned practices here but didn't ban it with imports and as we embark on this animal sentience bill I know we as farmers we absolutely embrace our ambition on animal welfare we're the first country to ever legislate on it and indeed you do not have a good business unless animal welfare sits at the heart of that business but if we are going to take our farmers out of the marketplace and introduce tougher laws here that we are not expecting other farmers to produce to it's going to really, really damage our competitive ability. So I'm having a lot of engagement. This bill is going through the House of Lords at the moment. I'm speaking to a lot of people, but we really do need to make sure that, that our voice is heard. Um, the same with the Environment Bill. You know, the ambition was always uh, to be able to have better regulation, to not be confined by what was seen as burdensome bureaucracy. And yet here we are, we seem to be piling on the bureaucracy like never before. So it's, it's I guess, so important, the work that the NFU is doing on, on influencing this, the level of engagement. I've had a lot of conversations with people over the summer months while members of both houses are, are on recess. And I'll keep you very close to it. I can't not mention the, se the situation with seasonal and permanent workers at the moment. I mean, you've heard in the news the situation with Nando's, McDonald's and others. It really is critical. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about haulage or whether we're talking about fruit and veg pickers. Something has to be done or we are going to see major, major problems. Um, so, again, many conversations going on. We're feeding in at every level of government, and I will keep you updated. But on seasonal workers alone, um, for the vacancies available and, and the people to do those jobs, it's up 34%. It's never been that high before. It's only ever got to 25% shortage of, of people to fill the vacancy. So that shows you how difficult this is right now and something, as I say, has got to be done and urgently. 
Anyway, with that, I will say goodbye and urge you, please, as always, please do take care. And I very much look forward to speaking to you again next week. Many thanks.